Hey guys, so welcome to today's lesson. So what we were doing today in our computer software lesson is we were talking a little bit about the applications and we were talking about the difference between applications and utilities. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the lesson, to recap, the sort of things that we talked about is we were talking about the CPU, we were talking about the networks, and some of the areas that you need to work on is you needed to work on uh, the von Neumann architecture, and you also needed to remember to actually explain the difference between the von Neumann architecture of the CPU and the Harvard. Now, if this is an area that you're still struggling with, we, we need to go back over this, and there will be more notes recorded in the future. So, in the so in the lesson today, our main objective was that we needed to be able to explain the different types of software that were available on the computer system. And we talked about what an application is and what a utility was. And looking at our outcomes, all of you managed to figure out what an application was and you were able to give me examples along with explaining what a utility is and giving me examples of that. Now we started to link it back to previous exam questions and you were looking at the difference between magnetic state hard drives and solid state and you were able to say reasons why some of the utilities wouldn't be useful. So I'm going to continue on now. So we started talking about what an application was, and we all decided that there were a number of applications available, but you needed to know what type of application that they were. Now, we came up with this list of six, and we had word processors, spreadsheet packages, presentation software, desktop publishing, image editors and web browsers. Now some of the tools that you will know for a word processor, Microsoft Word, Spreadsheet, Excel, Presentation, PowerPoint, Desktop Publishing, we use Publisher, and we also talked about image editors such as image editors that allow us to manipulate or change pictures in some sort of way. So there was Fireworks, you're able to use Photoshop to do that, and web browsers such as Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari. Now, one of the things that is changing now that you need to be able to actually accept and acknowledge in an exam question is that you need to be able to explain what's happening to these applications because the advances in computer systems. A lot of the computer systems are changing over time, and what that allows us to do now is host a lot of these applications in the cloud so that you don't need to have them installed on your PC. So what was a utility? Well, when we were discussing the difference between a utility and an application, we decided that a utility was a, a utility is a small program that has one purpose. It's there to do one job, and it's usually concerned with the maintenance of a system. So if you want to make sure that your computer is running efficiently, you would carry out the utilities on this. So an example of this is that we have antivirus programs such as Norton's, we also have disk defragmentation, compression, file managers, and backup utilities. Now, one thing that you were asked in one of your exam questions is why would you not use a disk defragmentation on a solid state drive? Now, you need to remember what you've been taught previously. Solid state drives have a limited number of times that we can actually write onto them. And because of this, when we're using a disk defrag, the disk defrag actually moves files closer together. So think about what's happening there. It's rewriting the file, and what that's going to do is it's going to cause us a problem, and we're not going to be able to write as much data as we usually would. I mean, file managers we use on a day-to-day -day basis. We, we're able to organize our files in folders. Uh, there's also compression which you may have used 7-zip or WinZip or even WinRAR. So these are all utilities that you need to be able to explain and acknowledge why you would use those. So in the lesson, I gave you out an activity sheet, and what I was asking is that for this to be completed by the next lesson. And what we're going to do for the next lesson is we're going to start this lesson by discussing what we learned previously. Now, the next lesson that we're going to be studying is we're going to be looking at different memory, memory management tools because it's important that the, the RAM on your computer is managed efficiently so that you get the best performance out of your PC. So by the end of this lesson, you'll know what we mean by memory management and you'll be able to explain what paging is. Now, some of you may be able to explain what virtual memory is and you can talk about the need for improving the performance of this. So, 
Memory management, if you think back to one of the jobs that we talked about in our last lesson of an operating system, memory management has a key job of actually storing the program and the data. So memory management is one of the six parts of the operating system that we need to be able to do. Remember we talked about file management before. Now we, with memory management we need to be concerned with safety aspects. The good thing and the reason why we need memory ma management is that you need to keep your data safe. Now if your programs were able to actually move onto or change another program that can cause problems. What the memory management tools allow us to do is make sure that data is kept from being changed by other programs. So imagine if Microsoft Word was allowed to change your operating system. That could cause you problems. So memory management stops that from happening. So malicious coders or malicious programs are limited to what they can do. They are restricted with the data that they can work with. And that's what memory management is. So we need to make sure that all of our programs run efficiently and they run continuously one after another. And this is what happens in the RAM. So here's an example of a program that is stored into our main memory. We have our first program here, which is program A. Then we have program B and program C. Now, program B is no longer being used. So you notice here that it's free. Program B is no longer needed, therefore it is closed and it gives us free space. Now, program D needs to fit back into this empty space and there's a number of ways we can do this. There's no need, there's no continuous block that this D can fit into, so we need to figure out a way of moving that D across the whole memory. Now, there are two ways of doing this. If you move C along, okay, this would work, but it would be inefficient because this would mean that we're constantly having to move C or D or moving things around. And this is a lot of rearranging and it's going to slow down the performance of your PC. So what we can do is we can split it up into small sections so that D can fit into both slots. So we could have a bit of D here and you could have a bit of D over here. And if we split the modules or routines of a program, that's called segmentation. You are splitting it into smaller chunks to fit it around the free memory available. Now, the alternative way of doing this is something called paging. What you can actually do is you can split it into blocks of the same size. So you might have a file that is 10 me megabytes and then you have 10 1 megabyte pages and the operating system keeps a page table so that it can keep track of what is happening and move that around and this means that the program doesn't have to be stored continuously and the operating system can actually move it around where it needs to go. Most modern day operating systems today use a combination of segmentation and paging. I hope that has been useful to you. What we have and what you will be doing in the second part of this lesson of this topic that we are covering is you will be answering a number of questions to assess that you are aware of this and I would like you as a research task to research what is meant by thrashing so that when we come to the next lesson in the future we can discuss this and we can close any gaps in what you need to know. Thank you for listening. If this has helped you please subscribe because I'm going to upload more videos for our lessons and hopefully they will help you for the future. Thanks for watching.